Counselor, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. May I please the court? Opposing counsel? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and thank you for being here this afternoon. The trial that you're about to see today is a simple case about love. It's a case about a husband's love for his wife and a wealthy doctor's love of money. A love of money so intense that it would cost a man his life, rob a wife of her husband, and deprive all of us of a well-respected judge. You see, the evidence in this case will show that Friday, June 6, 2008, began like any other day for Judge Robert Canyons. He wakes up, bathes, puts on his clothes, and kisses his wife, my client, Connie Canyons, goodbye before he goes to the courthouse to preside over a trial. Later that evening, after the jury has returned with its verdict in that case, Judge Canyons packs up and prepares to go home. He grabs his rolling briefcase beside him, takes a few steps from his desk, when suddenly Judge Canyons collapses to the floor. Judge Canyons dies on that floor, ladies and gentlemen. And you will hear testimony from Dr. Andy Little, a medical expert with over 20 years of experience, who will explain that the judge's collapse and death were caused by a catastrophic drop in his blood pressure, brought on by the interaction of two prescription medications the judge was taking. And we will present to you physical evidence that just two months before he died, Judge Canyons was suffering from symptoms similar to those of June 6th and sought medical help from the defendant at the defendant's urgent care clinic, a clinic where, unknown to the judge, the defendant had a policy of seeing at least 10 patients every single hour. In that six minute or less window, the defendant claims that he thoroughly reviewed the judge's medical history, thoroughly examined the judge, and diagnosed him with a cold, completely ignoring his duty to warn the judge about the fatal side effects of the two prescriptions that he was taking. Now at this point, you might be wondering, what kind of medications would do that to somebody? And at that part of the trial, ladies and gentlemen, I need you to mentally prepare yourself that what you hear might make you feel uncomfortable. Because you're going to hear testimony about sex and that the judge couldn't have sex with his wife because of nitrates he was taking to treat a heart condition. You will also hear testimony about erectile dysfunction. Because the judge loved his wife and was concerned about his performance, he also began taking Viagra. It was those two prescriptions, the nitrates and the Viagra, that combined led to his death on June 6th. And it was those two prescriptions that the defendant ignored in his pursuit of profit at the rate of 10 patients an hour. Now, you will also hear evidence in this case that might make you think less of my client. You'll learn, for example, that two years after the judge's death, his wife, now his widow, is seeing another man. And you will hear a wild-eyed theory from the defendant who has claimed in court documents that it was that other man who killed the judge. But ladies and gentlemen, don't be fooled. Because we will present to you proof that that other man was found not guilty by a jury just like you. We will also present to you the autopsy report of the judge, not only noting the medications in his system, but also noting that his head was normocephalic, which meant normal. The other guy couldn't have hit him over the head, as the defendant claims, or there would be some kind of indication of it. You will also learn that the investigator who came up with this crazy theory is actually a patient and personal friend of the defendant, and that his college education wasn't in forensic science or some kind of related field, but in music history. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, you will learn that this isn't the first time the doctor's carelessness has led to death or permanent injury from one of his patients. As we present to you a judgment entered in another state against the defendant, for his failure to warn a patient about a dangerous interaction between two prescription medications. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this case isn't about my client. It's about the death of Judge Robert Canyons, and it's about one bad doctor and his love of money. And when this trial is over, when you've had a chance to see and hear all of the evidence for yourself, I will return before you again and ask you to make the defendant pay for that love of money by returning a verdict from my client. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. 
Thank you.